Oh, what's that, Dad? I'd be interested. What? How I just started eating Wheaties. Huh? Here I'm talking to you with my full of Wheaties. Well, how did you I'm start? I'm dying to swallow them. Well, how did you start eating Wheaties? 1937. My brother worked. My older brother worked for Hires Root Beer in Pittsburgh. Hires Root Beer. Hires Root Beer. And what was his name? His name was Eddie Fisher. Was that how they knew him as Eddie? Was that how they knew him as Eddie? They knew him as Bunny. Bunny. All right. I so. don't want to tell you that. Do you laugh? <laughs> but <laughs> he he went to work about eight o'clock in the morning. My brother Earl and I had a paper route, Post Gazette in Pittsburgh, and we were up by four thirty, five o'clock in the morning delivering papers. Yeah. So we got home uh, before my brother Eddie got out of bed to go to work. My mother made sure that Buddy always had his Wheaties. He loved Wheaties. He started Wheaties before I did. He had Wheaties and a quart of milk. How long? How old did Buddy? How how long did Bunny live? How long did he live? Yeah. How old was he? When Ninety-three. He, Ninety-three. And how old are you, by the way? Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. Be ninety pretty quick. Ninety quick. Ninety by the time you're done this pool of Wheaties. <laughs> So you get home from the paper route, you and Earl at the... Me and Earl would hurry up, get the paper delivered, so we go home and we had a bowl of Wheaties and half of the quart of milk. My mother said, don't you ever dare leave him without his milk and Wheaties. Who, Bunny? Yeah, without, yeah, don't leave, yeah, because he got up and he's he still in bed. To, he's the one that started the Wheaties. I see, and you're, he's still in bed, you and Earl worked the whole morning, yeah. and you're hungry. Yeah, we're, we we had our Wheaties and went back to bed for a couple of hours. Now, Bunny, he sounds like he sounds like a a pushover. No, no pushover. He was a weightlifter from the time he was. Uh, I think he started weightlifting by 16, sixteen, and he continued until about three years before he died. So then, I, you wouldn't have come in and made fun of Bunny then. The, about his name or his nickname or... Well, his nickname, we never knew where it came from. And it turned out he was born in Detroit, in Michigan. And his uh, grandmother, they were living in the same house. And that's where the name comes from. That was her little bunny. He was her little bunny. I see. That's where the name came from. So, and, that, and that nickname stuck his whole life. I don't think anybody knew his name was Eddie. All right, so what would happen if it, if you would have drank all the milk before Bunny got up? Bunny would have killed us. <laughs> <laughs> before my mother would have killed us. Bunny was a, a pretty good side kid. So when Bunny was coming... You were running. Oh, yeah. He was a boy. So I guess that Wheaties really worked for Bunny then, huh? It did. What it did, did for me, it gave me quickness. To get away from Bunny. To get away from Bunny. <laughs> yeah. I was fast on my feet. So did, so did Bunny do his part in the war? Bunny was in the Army. Who he wound up in the Philippines, so... So he was in the fight of fights, he huh? He probably saw a little bit of action. My brother Earl and I were both on aircraft carriers in the Navy. Yeah, what carrier were you on? I was on the uh, CVL number 22, USS Independence, built in New Jersey. Where, Jersey City? Huh? Jersey City? The sun, sun, I think it was the Sun Shipyard it was built. Okay. Is that part of a battle group? We were in the third fleet with Bull Halsey. Admiral Halsey. Admiral Halsey. And right. the, at the landing of Lady. In the Philippines, Halsey was on USS New Jersey battleship, which is now a memorial 
in New Jersey. Yeah, in Camden, New he Jersey. He was nice and comfortable while we were flipping around in the typhoon. What year was that? 1940, 43 maybe? You mean when Halsey almost lost the whole fleet? No. By going yeah. to a... <laughs> Halsey, after the typhoon, Halsey uh, abandoned his post in the Philippines and went north looking for uh, a couple, two or three Japanese carriers that didn't have any planes on them, didn't have any aviators. And were you part of that group? And he left... Were you in that group? He left my brother on his small carrier in the Philippines. And and your what carrier was that? Who was that? Your brother Earl? He was on the... Uh, I'm not sure that Marcus, Marcus Island, I think it might have been. So what did you, you were on the Independence, and what did Halsey pull you out of the Philippines to go chase? Go chase uh, Admiral, uh, what was the name, Ozawa, I think. Yeah. Who suckered Halsey in to go north. Halsey was going to sink those carriers. They had no airplanes or aviators on them. <laughs> And, and, and so he, he left. He left he, his post. Hey, he left my brother in that little fleet of CVE carriers that carried about maybe uh, 10, 15 planes to protect the landing at Lady. That was a big landing. They were. What are they? They were preparing to take oh, the yeah, Philippines, they were, they right? Were, they were. Uh, they were landing. But they had already started to land at Lady. When uh, the Jap Japanese come down with their big battleships and heavy cruisers in a mess of destroyers and submarines, they were going to tear a lady apart. And Halsey had you and and everybody else on yeah, a wild we goose gone. chase. We were gone. We were gone. We took a vacation. We went north. So who uh, he disobeyed orders? Who or whose orders was he disobeying? He had his orders to Nimitz. And who, Nimitz and was he abandoned his post. Nimitz was, who was, Nimitz was what? He was the head of the uh, Pacific Fleet. So he, he, he violated the, his superior's big orders. Big time he abandoned his orders. Well, did they court-martial him? They say he should have been, but he was such a hero that they, I guess they gave him the benefit of the doubt, yeah. which is unusual for the Navy. But they'll hang you, boy, if you do something wrong. All right, so what happened before Lady to your ship? Were you, was you, did your ship see some action somewhere else before Lady? Yeah, Tarawa. Tarawa. With the landing of Tarawa, we covered the landing there. And what, we when was that? For, when was that? November 20th, 1943. What happened on that day? Well, we were a night carrier. We were the first night carrier. The Independence. We left Tarawa uh, late in the afternoon, I believe, and not too far, not too far away. We ran into, or they ran into us, sixteen Betty bombers. That was a, a two-engine Mitsubishi bomber. Sixteen of them. Coming at your aircraft carrier. They didn't, they, no, not all of them. Two of them came and dropped torpedoes. One hit us on the uh, starboard side about midships, took out the engine room. We were dead in the water. Two other, two other uh, torpedoes hit and they were duds. Or else, we, or we else, the, uh, else the whole ship would have went down, huh? Oh, it would have blew us clean out of the water. How far were you from land? We, they they were able to get the ship going again, but we made it by about ten or twelve knots. And I remember going. We went to a an island in our possession, Funa called Funafuti, and there. It was a pretty good-sized base, 
Naval Anchorage. And there was repair ships there. And they put they put divers down and checked the damage, which was extensive. We found out when we got back to Pearl Harbor and got into dry dock. We found out how, how big a, a hole was in that ship. How yeah. big how big was it? It was plenty big. <laughs> like big enough to drive a truck through big? Oh yeah. How, some, some some of your shipmates must have been casualties. We lost 12, 12 sailors <clears throat> that day. So what happened <clears throat> to your boat then? Did you, your... We, we, I don't know how long we were <clears throat> in Funafuti, maybe a day or two. And they, they shored up the bulkheads enough they were able to get back to sea and back to Pearl Harbor. So. And it put it in dry dock in Pearl Harbor, and then we saw the hole in that thing. And you could, they, they was, I think there was damage where the two torpedoes hit the, the side of the ship, the, the indentation. <clears throat> but they knew that three, tor three torpedoes, two torpedoes hit that ship. So what did you do? You stay in Pearl Harbor and repair the ship, or? They, uh, there was too much... They were going to tie up Pearl Harbor uh, shipyard too long, so they went back. We went back to San Francisco. So the, you were able to sail the boat back to San Fran. Yep. And what'd you do? Repair it there. Yep, Hundred Point in uh, San Francisco Bay. How long did that take? I think about four or five months. Yeah. So what, then you were back in action? Then we went back to sea. Went back, what, the, the straight to the Philippines, or? Hmm? Is that when you went back to the Philippines? That, yeah, we were back, yeah. That was about the time of the Philippine landing. So you, you took, your ship took a hit at, at Terra. And what date was that, no, November 20th? 20th. 1943. 43. I think Terra was a, that was like a, a communications uh, hub or something, a very important area to control in the Pacific, wasn't it? That was a, that was a landing. They bombarded that, that island for days. Battleship, cruisers, airplanes, they bombed the hell out of it. They thought they could walk ashore. The Japanese were, they were dug in. They had caves. Passageways. They had stored food and uh, artillery or whatever. And they lost a lot. I don't know how many Marines they lost that day. They lost plenty of them. And that was the day that your ship was hit, or was the, 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 that that was November twenty? Yeah. So you were kind of lucky. You were you were out of action there before before the action really got hot and heavy there. Well, the Navy, you know. I mean, for the fighting really started on the island. They, they, you yeah. were there for the bombing of the island. Yeah. We could. And then your ship took a hit, so you had, you had to leave. We, yeah, we could. No, the ship wasn't hit there. It was. It was on our way. We were going to be. What we were. To do, we were a night carrier. We operated at night. I see. On a small airplane, a small carrier like Independence. So, were you a scout, a spy ship, or a scout ship, or a what? What were you, a scout ship? You were, you were sending out scouts at night, or what were what you doing? They, what the Japanese were doing at dark, they would send out maybe two or three planes or whatever. Uh, uh, I think most of the time they sent out those two engine bombers, Mitsubishi. And by the way, when I come out of the service in 19, uh, well, I come out of the service in 46, if, yeah, 46. But I later on bought a Mitsubishi automobile. Uh. <laughs> Here these people were trying to kill me at one time. Here I am buying an automobile. <laughs> well, okay. where were we?
but now you, you you've bought lots of Japanese automobiles since then. Yeah, I bought it. Yeah, but that was the only Mitsubishi I bought. I see. Uh, the night car what we did. We had pretty good radar on the airplane between the ship and the, our plane. They would locate these uh, bombers. What they were, it would just come out in dark to torment us. They, they knew our bed time was not about 9 o'clock. And then as soon as we got to bed and got to sleep, they'd pick up these uh, bombers, these scout planes, who were just out there to torment us. They, they knew we were going to pick we were going to pick them up on radar and keep the guys at general quarters and, uh, and out of bed. So we were, for a long time, we were just crazy for sleep. All oh, these Wheaties are pretty good. Are they? Yeah. After all these years, you still like Excuse them? Excuse my manners here. Mm. I love that sugar. The Wheaties are full of sugar. <laughs> well, it's the good sugar, right? Um, all that sugar hasn't hurt you all these years. So, those bombers come out. We had, our fire planes would, would take off, our night carrier planes, and they would locate these, these bombers. And they knocked quite a few of them down. The radar from the airplane and the ship between. Between the combination, they pick up these planes. <laughs> the fires you get behind the bomber, the bomber never do it, would hit them. They knocked quite a few of them down. That's the reason they had the night carriers. So later on, you know, I'll tell you, those pilots were flying daylight on a small carrier like, like Independence. These pilots were, these pilots had a lot of courage. They were damn good to land on a small plane at night. No lights. The only light they had was a landing signal officer, who was just on the stern of the ship, had flashlights <laughs> bringing these guys in. We, we lost quite a few planes. Yeah. They, they didn't make the landing. So what was going through your head when your uh, ship was attacked? Uh, I can still remember the uh, the thud from that torpedo hit. I thought, oh my God, that that's serious. <laughs> that is real serious. So, Why did it rock they, the whole boat? Oh, hell yeah. They probably lifted it out of the water a little bit. Uh, the concussion was so bad that if you remember anything about aircraft carriers, our, we had 40 millimeter anti aircraft guns on both sides, starboard, port side of the ship. This hit on the starboard side, this torpedo, and it took a gun mount. Clay off this. I don't know how many tons that thing weighed, and took it in the air and went all the way over to this port side and into the ocean. And that's where we lost some of the men on that. And we lost some of the men in the uh, engine room, but a total of 12, which was unbelievable. Well, how many men were on the ship? I, I guess we had about maybe 1,200. So 12 men, that was, that was yeah. low casualties for such a, yeah. a big hit on the, on the ship. Yeah. So did you think you were going down? I was sure. <laughs> I was sure we were going. But then the, the, uh, the repair parties, and those guys really do a job. They shored up those bulkheads. 
So they sprung, Everywhere. they sprung into action and saved the ship. Oh, they, yeah, they, 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 the guys in the engine room, they got, uh, got that ship back running. I tell you, there were some, there were some good boys in that ship. Good men to go down into those, uh, those lower decks and not know, you know, what they were going to face. Lots of memories. Yeah. Would you do it all again? Would you do it all again? <laughs> would, I, would, I, would I go back again? No, I don't think. Yeah, I'm sure I would if I had, you know. I mean, that was your decision to, to go in the Navy, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Why'd you pick the Navy? Well, I thought there's a risk of, uh, you know, losing your life out there, but the, uh, the, the good part about it was you, you, you were going to have a home. You know, you're going to have a place to sleep and you're going to have probably three meals a day, which is, is what happened. We had good, clean beds. That ship had uh, three doctors on it. We had a dentist. We had uh, a bake shop. Wow, it's like a floating hotel, huh? A f yeah, a f yeah, floating hotel. And the, the meals were pretty darn good. No Wheaties. No Wheaties. That's the only, the only no problem wait. I had with the Navy. It didn't store any Wheaties. So that was all that, that worked out pretty good until that day in November then. Then you were... Yeah. Had second thoughts about your choice of the Navy? I was so glad when we got the Fooly Foodie and they, the, the people told us that the ship was safe to go back to Pearl Harbor because we thought maybe we'd get caught somewhere in between the Fooly Foodie and Pearl Harbor because we weren't making much. I think we were making 14, 15 knots, I think, which is pretty slow. So we got back to Pearl, and we took it back, took the ship back to, they bought, they bolstered it up some more, and then uh, we were back to uh, San Francisco, where it was a different life for three or four months. And uh, where did you go after San Fran now? You went to the Philippines? Well, I got a seven-day leave. Did you believe that? No, 14-day leave. And it took us seven days to travel by train back to my... I lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, all, the, all that travel time, and then when we got home, you only had... You had just the seven days, which wasn't much. But the difference between November... 1943, and being back in uh, in Pennsylvania, being back home, it was quite a change. Sure. Okay, Deb, that's, uh, that's enough. <laughs> All right, sayonara.